Good Tuesday evening, July 2nd, and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Charges of rape, robbery, assault, and drug distribution against a Chelan resident have all been dismissed after he was exonerated by DNA evidence. The Wenatchee School District says the girls' softball field is still on schedule to be completed next month. Warmer tomorrow, hot on the 4th of July with triple-digit temperatures expected this weekend. All the details coming up in your local weather forecast. Captain Edgar Reinfeld is the city of Wenatchee's new chief of police. Mayor Mike Poyer announced his selection today in a press release after a months long recruitment process. Reinfeld has worked for Wenatchee Police Department for over 22 years and is a 30 year U.S. Air Force Reserve veteran. In March, former police chief Steve Crown announced his retirement after serving in the role since 2016. And in May, the city announced that Reinfeld, Captain Brian Chance, and Doug Shoemaker, who previously served as police chief of Denton, Texas, as the top three finalists. The city council is set to confirm Poyer's appointment of Reinfeld as chief on July 11th. Charges of rape, robbery, assault, and drug distribution against a Chelan resident have all been dismissed after he was exonerated by DNA evidence. 53-year-old Darren Daniel Hunter was arrested and charged one year ago after Chelan County Sheriff's detective said he sexually assaulted a woman at his Chelan home and sold her illegal drugs. But Hunter's attorney, Nicole Hankin, said genetic testing of a rape kit used to assess the victim found his DNA was not present. Chelan County prosecutors withdrew their seven felony charges against Hunter on Friday. He spent five months in the Chelan County Jail after his arrest until Hankins won a reduction in his $5 million bond. The attorney says in addition to DNA exoneration, security video from the home where Hunter was staying also appears to contradict the victim's allegations. One person is recovering from a gunshot after an incident southeast of Soap Lake early Monday, which Grant County Sheriff's deputies are still investigating. Deputies say a 42-year-old landowner was wounded after exchanging gunfire with the occupants of a Dodge Ram pickup he discovered on his property. The man suffered a gunshot wound to the upper chest and was flown to Confluence Health Hospital in Wenatchee, where he was in stable condition yesterday. A dog in the vehicle was also struck by gunfire was cared for by a Moses Lake Veterinary Clinic. Deputies say all the people involved in the gunfight have been identified, but no arrests have yet been made while the investigation is ongoing. The Wenatchee Valley Humane Society's Board of Directors announced the hiring of Jane Provo as the new interim executive director after the sudden departure of James Pumphrey last week. Provo has served as a dedicated member of the Humane Society's board, but will now be in charge of overseeing day-to-day -day operations, working closely alongside staff and volunteers, and representing the animal shelter to the local community. The board is still seeking candidates for the long-term role of executive director. When we come back, students getting ready to start school at Wenatchee Valley College can participate in a free course to prepare them for what's ahead. And last week, first responders from the Wenatchee Valley Fire Department's rope rescue team got in some hang time on the grain elevators on South Wenatchee Avenue. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 
Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Let your voice be heard. I'm former Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett, and I'd like to be your District 12 state representative in Olympia. With my extensive experience in law enforcement, I'm eager to serve you to ensure your community and neighborhood public safety. I intend to safeguard and improve your quality of life. I support your private property rights, lowering your tax burden, helping small business to thrive, fiscal responsibility, and your public safety. Paid for by the committee to elect Brian Burnett for state representative. Students getting ready to start school at Wenatchee Valley College can participate in a free course to prepare them for what's ahead. The College Readiness Summer Boot Camp is a two-week class that teaches college navigation, study skills, and reading, writing, and math fundamentals. Students can earn up to three credits for their participation, and their tuition is paid for by the Wenatchee Valley College Foundation. The class meets from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Monday through Thursday on the Wenatchee campus and begins two weeks before fall quarter from September 9th through the 19th. Enrollment is now open and those interested in applying can do so on the Wenatchee Valley College website. The Wenatchee School District says the girls' softball field is still on schedule to be completed next month. In the latest update, the district said construction crews will complete the dugouts, press box, and locker rooms this week. Construction began on the site in April when softball players and school administrators were invited to a groundbreaking ceremony. The $4.1 million softball field resolves a Title IX complaint against the district that alleged unequal treatment of male and female athletes. There was no set date for completion, though August timeline was established last September. Last week, first responders from the Wenatchee Valley Fire Department's rope rescue team got in some hang time on the grain elevators on South Wenatchee Avenue near Peachy Street, managed by Highline Growers. The group practiced several rescue scenarios on the tall storage structure. Firefighters say the exercise makes for good practice if they're called upon to help a stranded victim down from a cliff face. Coming up next in tonight's feature story, we will bring you an interview with Camille Stamm, a lifelong resident of Leavenworth who survived a bear attack two years ago right on her front doorstep. Less windy weather tomorrow and slightly warmer with hot temperatures expected for the 4th of July on Thursday. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Caught in a conflict? Family? Workplace? Neighbor? Business? Housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Who is Brant Capel? Brant Capel is dedicated to our community. Who is Brant Capel? Brant Capel has a vision for the future. Who is Brant Capel? Brant Capel listens to our concerns. Who is Brant Capel? This is Ray Dobbs. I know Brant Capel, and I know he'll make an outstanding Chelan County Commissioner. This is Brant Capel, and I'm running to be your next Chelan County Commissioner. I'd be grateful for your vote. Paid for by the committee to elect Brant Capel, Republican. 
Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. Camille Stem is a retired nurse and a lifelong resident of Leavenworth in the Upper Valley. She grew up observing and understanding the black bears that live in forage in the Cascade foothills. But two years ago, while stepping outside with her dog Pepper, Camille was attacked on her own doorstep by a mother bear who'd grown too accustomed to finding food among humans. In tonight's feature story and in her first ever interview, Camille spoke with NCW Life News about that frightening encounter and the lesson she hopes her community will take away from it. About five, maybe six, Dad and I went camping way up the icicle and it was when it was a dirt road all the way and we went fishing and we cooked our dinner and then we threw out a pad and slept under the stars. Um, and Dad put the food up, you know, and he said, well, if a bear or anything comes, just crawl down in your bag and just stay there. Don't worry, you will be fine. And a bear did come and he woke me up and said, now be real quiet. Um, there's bears sniffing us. And uh, the bear did sniff and walked away because we weren't fresh food, I suppose. It was a sleeping bag and such. So that was the first time. I did a lot of trail running, so you're always looking for bears or cougars, um, and you're kind of uh, a gift for them in a way if they're hungry and if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But most animals like to go away. But you're always looking and saw more bear than anything else. Um, ran into an trails up the icicle mama bear and two cubs one day and that was oh okay so my friend and I made lots of noise and kept on going and when we came back we started making a ton of noise about a mile away um, wherever she was but yeah it's, it was always a lot of respect not a lot of fear a lot of respect The flu going upstairs became a haven for yellow jackets and it was the end of October and the yellow jackets were laying their larvae. We put this together way after the fact um, and she was going up for that larva. The two days earlier, late in the afternoon, she had been here on a Thursday. Too late to call the city should have left a message that had been fine and I was gone the next day and then this happened on Saturday. I came out with Pepper, 6.30, pretty typical timing, went up the stairs there and I stood on top of the stairs on the concrete well, and watched him go do his thing, the outside lights come on and I must have heard something because I turned a bit and at that point she must have slammed me to the concrete. It totally knocked me out. Um, it laid open the back of my head all the way across. And while I was out, she clawed my leg, which to this day, those spots are very tender. Um, so that's just so deep. Um, she clawed across my pelvic region a couple of times, tore a lot open, um, a lot. Um, and when I came to, she was on top of me and um, she was rooting around my neck. I woke up enough and it ticked me off. And that's when I gave her a right hook and I hit her real hard and she didn't like that. And then I gave her a left and she really didn't like that. And she kind of shook and then she just backed off 
slowly and she turned around and walked away. And I went, whoa, okay. I had no idea to the extent of my injuries at that time, none whatsoever. Bears kill mm -hmm. with, by getting the femoral artery or the carotid artery. She went after both. Um, I'm very lucky, uh, but that is how they kill. She missed my femoral by a uh, hair, um, or I would have bled out. And, um, and she didn't get to my carotid because I woke up and I gave her a right punch. I was bleeding an awful lot. My head was open and it was just spinning. I, c I couldn't hardly find a, a way to walk straight. But I decided the hospital's right there. My car's right there. My dog's right there. I'll go get my keys and drive to the hospital. I can get there quicker than calling 911. I mean, I'm lucky in so, so many ways. Um, very lucky. It was and has been a very long recovery. I still have issues, um, probably always will, um, with my brain and with the dizziness and the, where's my foot going to hit the ground when I walk. Um, but I'm okay. Bears don't do that. That's not a natural thing. That was a weird circumstance. But she had been so habituated to food and garbage cans. She was a huge bear. She was almost 300 pounds, somewhere in there. That's because of the garbage. 10 minutes after she attacked me, she was caught on video up at Yodelin trying to get into food. I probably drove right past her. The habituated ones, yeah, they're worrisome. But regular bears, no, they're, they're not, no. My neighbors up here got the first bear can, and that was a, a good thing, because those cans were getting knocked over all the time. I certainly have a bear-proof can, number one. If you have garbage, you have a bear-proof can. If you don't, um, shame on you. <laughs> You can take that out. Um, but really, it's vitally important in this community. There are so many cans all over. The bears, this bear is gone because it was so habituated to food. And they're trying to, you know, get all the weight on that they can before winter. Um, Bear-proof cans, just being very aware of things around you. Um, not leaving dog food, bowls of dog food out, bowls of cat food out, anything like that. They smell it. They're just uh, amazing creatures that can uh, find anything. So I guess that's the top of the list. I, I think of all the tourists that go walking through when I sat here on this deck and watched people come down one day there was a, last summer, mama bear and two cubs, and the woman came down in just a little um, tube, and she was going towards her, wanting to get a picture. And mama bear can go right through that water fast. Woman in a little tube is not going to move fast. And I, I had to yell at her, don't do that. You're putting yourself in real peril. And I, I've done that more than once off of this deck. So there's a lot of concern, especially as the season gets really going. And I know the city feels that way. I know fish and game feel that way. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Tuesday was a good one. I mentioned last night that today would be a lot like yesterday and boy, it really was maybe a little bit more sunshine as we take a look outside our weather window. And this is our jump off Ridge North SkyFi Tower camera. And you can see a lot of blue sky out there today, but you can also see our camera doing some shaking out there as well. We did have plenty of wind a lot like yesterday. Boy, how about that wind last night? It really picked up. 
up. All right, here we go. Your 4th of July forecast coming up on Thursday, and it couldn't be better for the 4th of July. Dry, we'll see lots of sunshine on Thursday. Just a light northerly wind. Those will actually die down a little bit in the afternoon, and we're going to see temperatures most likely for us into those low 90s as we get into Thursday. That will be the beginning of a very major heat wave that we will see beginning this weekend, and you can see our temperatures at the bottom here, 98 Friday. I think we will go over 100 degrees on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, so those actually might be a little bit low, but as you can see, even for Moses Lake, 101 and 102s for Sunday and Monday, it's going to get hot, and it looks like it's going to last for a good chunk of next week as well. We'll talk more about that coming up. Today's high temperature, exactly where we should be, 84 unofficially today, our uh, record high on this date, 104 degrees set in 2013. This morning we were at 61. That's two degrees above our normal of 59. And our record, boy, it stood for a long time. 1962, 43, our overnight record for low temperatures. Sunrise this morning, 509, and it sets tonight at 901. All right, getting you in now to those Wednesday temperatures, and we are warming up a little bit. 88s for Moses Lake and Afreda goes for Quincy as well. 87 from Wenatchee into Eniat and Chelan. And then mid 80s in Leavenworth. 86 the high temperature tomorrow in Kashmir. It should be a lot less wind tomorrow and that'll be nice. Tonight mostly clear skies. You can see, see still some wind will hang around in our overnight hours. We'll see low temperatures tonight. A little bit chillier than we have seen them in the mid 50s. And then for Wednesday sunny. We will see just a northwest breeze tomorrow afternoon. High temperatures in the mid to upper 80s as high pressure continues to push in and it is going to be warm all up and down the west coast. Wait until you see some of these temperatures. Here we go on Independence Day. Sunny skies. This will be the first day of our heat wave and that's Thursday. High temperatures in the low 90s for us and that goes for almost all of our viewing area for the 4th of July. On Friday, this is where it really starts to get hot. Sunny skies. Boy, just clear all over the place and look at these dark red shades. That is hot. We're going to see high temperatures near 100 on Friday and we're even going up from there as we get you into the weekend. Saturday, sunny, unseasonably hot Saturday. High temperatures in those low 100s, about 105 down in the Tri-Cities for Sunday with all of these clear skies all over the western U.S. As we kick off our next work week, I should say Sunday as well, low 100s, maybe around 102 on Sunday. By Monday, not much relief. We're still going to see all kinds of sunshine in Washington State. Still very hot with high temperatures again in the low 100s. All right, your seven day forecast now. 54 overnight tonight. Just a northwest breeze tomorrow. It should be a nice one. Sunny skies and 87 for your 4th of July on Thursday. Sunny and warmer, 93. And then here we go. With that heat wave. Look at these temperatures 99 and sunny Friday, 101 Saturday, 102 Sunday, and 101 degrees with sunshine on your Monday. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Dan Kuntz and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. As sheriff, I arrested rioters, rapists, and mass murderers locked up human traffickers who preyed on women and children. On my watch, everyone was accountable. Despite being the Attorney General for 12 years, Bob Ferguson does not take responsibility for the rapid increase in crime and homelessness, businesses moving out of state, and jobs lost. And he thinks he deserves a promotion?
The Seattle Mariners welcome the Baltimore Orioles to town tonight. Both teams had yesterday off. Both teams, of course, are leading their division. The Orioles are tied with the Yankees for first in the AL East. They have a plus 112 run differential. The Mariners have a three-game lead over the Astros in the AL West with a run differential of plus six. In other words, uh, the Mariners have been somewhat lucky this year to win their 47 games. Grayson Rodriguez starts for the Orioles. The Mariners will counter with George Kirby. First pitch tonight at 640. Highlights on tomorrow's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Houston was the only team in action yesterday in the American League West, and they won. They beat Toronto 3-1, to one. so the Mariners, who at one point had a 10-game lead in their division, has seen that lead shrink all the way down to just three games over the Astros. The Astros have won nine out of their last 10. The world champion Rangers continue to stumble, and the Angels and the Athletics really haven't done much of anything at all this year. Closer to home, the Wenatchee Apple Sox. They begin the second half of their league schedule tonight with Victoria, and they do so knowing they have already clinched a playoff spot by winning the West Coast League's North Division first half. Now, this is pretty convoluted, but take a look at what hap happened. They ended up tied with Edmonton for the same record for the first half. They ended up with 18-9 and nine league records. The first tiebreaker is head-to-head -head matchups, and even though Edmonton and Wenatchee are in the same division, they have yet to play each other, so they had to go to the third tiebreaker, which was run differential in league games. And it came all the way down to this. If Edmonton had beat Port Angeles by 15 or more runs last night, Edmonton would have won the division. They beat Port Angeles by 13 runs. So Wenatchee basically wins the first half Northern Division title of the West Coast League by two runs. And those two runs could have come at any time between May and last Sunday. A remarkable statistic. When Edgy welcomes Victoria into town, the Harbor Cats, this military appreciation night. First pitch is at 635 Apollo Thomas Senior Stadium. Tomorrow night is fireworks night. That means the first pitch will be one half hour later. It'll be at 705 tomorrow. And finally, the scoreboard from yesterday in the West Coast League. There's Edmonton beating Port Angeles. Thank goodness they didn't beat them by two more runs. Or I don't know what we do with that tiebreaker scenario. Victoria knocked off Nanaimo with the first game of the doubleheader. Nanaimo took the second half of the doubleheader. Portland swallowed Walla Walla big time. And they never got going in Kelowna. They got rained out. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for our iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.